Managing temperature of rooms in Space Station 14 is rather simplistic. It really just revolves strictly around Atmos and making sure that distro itself is not completely botched. That means you have to set up Atmos. Depending on the station, it's easier or harder. Uh, bagel station, you have to do everything by hand except the pumps themselves. But other than that, it's really not that complicated to set up the distro. Um, I've done this a billion times. But all you do is you need to connect the nitrogen pump and oxygen pump into a filter. And then you want to filter into the blue pipe, which is always the distro pipe, which is the air that goes into the station. I'm not going to show building the whole thing. I want to keep this short and simple. So you just want to set up your distro itself. You can always max out these pipes. There's no danger to maxing out these pipes. Really, there's not much danger to just maxing out all the pipes, but this is just the way I've always done it. And I like to just crank this one to 275. It's best to just think of the distro pipes as basically air storage. If there's no air escaping the station, the air will just build up. And you can just see the pressure rise on a station that is completely sealed. And it'll keep rising as it, until it hits its cap because there is no air being flowed around anywhere. And since we have no waste set up right now, that means all the air is just kind of getting trapped through the scrubbers. Uh, there's really not much waste with just one person, but with a full station of 80 people, you do want to manage your waste. Uh, you can filter it if you want, but for the sake of just managing temperature, it is irrelevant to manage the waste other than just dumping it all straight into space. So for a map like Bagel, the waste pipe starts at the south, and you can just lead it all the way to the north and dump it straight into space with a passive vent. So I'm just going to build pipes all the way over there to get to get waste built. So I've connected the waste line up into the waste valve, which would just passively vent all the waste in the space. We don't really care about keeping any of it if the goal is just to maintain a proper temperature on the station. So we could just turn this pump to max, turn it on, and basically all of the waste will just get dumped in the space constantly. You can see the carbon dioxide drain in real time as it is thrown into space. So we are all set here. This will pump indefinitely as long as power stays on, but Again, you're an engineer, so uh, it's probably easier to keep power on as an engineer than some other person. But now we need to actually worry about temperature control, and it's actually, like I said, rather simple. You're going to want your RCD so you can space the floor. Uh, you don't always need to space the floor, but it's rather helpful. The firefighting door remote can help save lives, so take that with you. You want your hollow fan projector. You're going to want either your hard suit or your fire suit. doesn't really matter. You just need something that is temperature resistant. You need your mask and you need an oxygen tank or a nitrogen tank depending on your species and we are pretty much good to go fix any temperature problem right now um, i would also recommend getting a t-ray because if you're going to destroy the floor you want to try to minimize the damage of the floor you're destroying and you probably also want to take a stack of steel with you the rcd is enough to build walls and stuff but just having extra materials can never hurt you never know exactly what situation you're getting into we're going to cover how to deal with high temperatures first. Uh, you deal with both high temperatures and low temperatures the same exact way. You could bring something like a portable scrubber, but it's not really necessary. If you ever actively get to a fire in progress, don't try to open the doors right away. Uh, you're just going to walk in and burn yourself to death. And regardless of whether you plan on entering right now or not, you can always take your hollow fan projector and press Z. Hollow fan projectors have a battery inside, power cell. You can charge them. Almost every engineering department in the game, I think all of them will have a cell recharger. So don't be afraid of using batteries. If not, you can always just get extra ones. But this plasma fire, or any plasma fire, will eventually choke itself out and die because it needs oxygen to burn. And once it burns too much of the oxygen, well, the fire itself will stop. That Which makes taking care of the temperature not all that difficult. I can still see the fire, but it is certainly dying off. And at this point, we actually are safe to open this door. We can use the firefighting door to do so. You can toggle between bolts, emergency access, and just opening and closing. And we could just walk straight in. And we want to make sure our internals are on. And we're actually not even having an issue with the uh, pressure because we are wearing a suit designed for pressure. It is about... The pressure is pretty high in here. It definitely gets much worse than this. This is a pretty small localized plasma fire. If you ever see a canister that's just turned on and somebody didn't max out the pressure like so, uh, it actually isn't too difficult to deal with the fire itself. Interestingly enough, some of the f fire locks aren't always configured across the station perfectly to deal with fire. For example, these fire locks just don't a trigger from the temperature and this is why you must do a visual representation of the area that is too hot or too cold before you start working on it because what you could do is you can purposely open all these fire locks 
with the firefighting remote. You can bolt them, even though it doesn't look like you can bolt these ones, you can bolt them, because you don't want anyone running in here. And then go to the other side of the fire, and bolt these doors as well, so no one can just walk in here and mess up your work of making this hallway safe. So we stopped the initial plasma canister. Fires are typically worse than this, but you deal with them just the same. If you can get access to the air alarm that is blinking red, you actually don't have to space anything. You could turn off auto mode, and you could swap to panic. And panic will make the scrubbers turn red, and it'll start pulling everything out of the room very rapidly. This is somewhat slow, but this is a way to help assist you in spacing the room. We want to space the room to get rid of all the hot air, all the superheated air, and bring the pressure down. The air vents themselves will also stop uh, functioning at this point until the air scrubber is done panicking because they are linked together through the air alarm. This is why using an air alarm to deal with temperature is actually really efficient. I'm nowhere near the scrubber that's even affected. These scrubbers actually aren't doing anything because they're not even hooked up to this air alarm. So what you could do to actually make this process easier, save these in the same network of the area that's affected, and you can hook it up to the air alarm just like this, and just click add. Now if I turn on auto real quick, turn it back off, swap to fill, swap to panic, now we can have these scrubbers panic to just speed up clearing up a room. So if a certain room doesn't have the same connection to a air alarm, it's no problem at all. You could just very easily link up multiple scrubbers. You can even build scrubbers. This is why I recommend bringing a T-Ray. If you don't want to space anything, you don't want to cause more damage to the station if you don't have to, patience is always key. You can literally just hook up more scrubbers to these pipes. This is why you also bring steel, and you can just panic filter everything out directly. If you're impatient, and I don't really need to show this, you can bring the fire axe and break windows to just get the air out of the station, or you can use an RCD and destroy the floor. Like, destroying the floor here would not really cause any damage, you could just replace it, and it would help speed up the process. And by the way, the fire alarm, uh, the firefighting door remote can actually bolt uh, maintenance doors and, like, general access doors, like, uh, just these normal airlocks. So... For anywhere you have access, you actually can block it off. I can't block this off because I don't have access to the chapel, so you just basically hope the chaplain doesn't just come sprinting through here and uh, causing issues. We've essentially sucked out most of the bad gas, but not quite all of it is still gone. Um, this is why spacing can speed things up. But what you can do at this point is you can drop off panic, and you could just go back to auto mode. And we could just do filtering wide. So now what the, the so now the air vents will kick back on and they'll start pumping in normal air while filtering out the hot air and you can watch the temperature rapidly jump up and down but start getting back towards a livable level quite quickly. This is also really nice because now you're not changing the pressure of other rooms and not directly messing up the atmospherics of the station. So really Doing this with cold is pretty much identical. I will actually show you in real time what happens if you're in a room that gets affected by freeze-on. But with just air alarm usage, you can 100% deal with temperature without having any special tools at all. And you can keep people safe as long as you keep people locked out and you are watching the temperatures. So it is still a little hot. And what we could do at this point is you can go back to panic to pull out some more of the air. And you basically just keep recycling it until we get all the hot air out. Hot temperature is definitely more of a primary concern than cold temperatures. Uh, you take quite a lot of damage from hot now. And due to the fact that it's still too hot, if I turn my internals off, you can see I'm actually not able to breathe correctly. So you could open doors to equalize the pressure. If you're just patient with panicking and filtering, you can just fully deal with the temperature without too much of an issue. But... Uh, Really, I, I, as much as I like avoiding having to space rooms on purpose, it just is the most efficient. So if I turn everything on panic, if I grab an RCD, if I go to deconstruct and just destroy floors that have nothing underneath them, I can start directly pulling the gas out. But you can see now since it's spaced, fire locks are automatic, and this starts causing the inner fire lock doors to open. Uh, you could open them on purpose and bolt them open so this doesn't happen. But this is why I try to avoid spacing as much as I can because you can't get as much control over the rooms. Like this room over here is still going to be hot. You can still even hear the mouse burning. Uh, I apologize if this is somewhat droning on. But this room is completely clear now. There is no atmosphere in here. 
So we can just take the RCD and go to floors mode and build the floor back. Uh, you would save a lot of materials just by using rods and steel, but for the purpose of speed, that's not an issue. So now we're going to go back to filter and wide. We are going to check the temperature again. We are back to room temp, even though there's basically no gas in here. It's just my breathing that is causing gas. We could take our fire lock remote and just open the doors. And there's going to be a bit of a temperature change again because these rooms were locked out. But if we open them all up, it starts equalizing the pressure rapidly between the rooms and makes it much easier to deal with overall. You start getting to a point where this is certainly livable. Uh, the pressure equalizing between more hallways will make this really not much of an issue. Uh, at this point, with 73 moles of nitrogen, 20 moles of uh, oxygen, we could breathe just fine. And it's not hot enough to cause any real damage. So if I take off my suit and my mask and everything else, you can see we have more or less solved the problem. You could do better, but the Atmos will just deal with this on its own. Um, the temperature will keep equalizing back towards distro. And in case you ever are, in case you aren't sure what your distro's temperature is, you can just examine any vent, and we can see there's plenty of gas in the whole distro net, and it's at a proper temperature. So at this point, we have done our jobs as an Atmos tech, and you have successfully fought fire. Cold, you will fight in the same exact way. I could just do this in real time. Get your protective gear on, and say some bozo somehow managed to get a hands on a freeze on canister, and they're like, "Oh well, it's so funny. I'm just going to open it up right here." Well, things will get cold really quickly, very quickly, and at this point, you can do the same thing. You treat hot and cold the same way. We want to turn off auto, and we want to turn on panic, because it's just a little bit more efficient than filtering wide. We don't want to be pumping air in, we just want to take air out, because the air is all bad. Again, even though it's super cold, spacing is still the way to go. The entire freeze on canister has been dumped, so this is mu a much worse example than the little bit of plasma I've done. It is very cold in here. You cannot breathe. There's also nitrous oxide, so this is just a very dangerous atmosphere. The panic will eventually deal with it, but this is a much larger gas leak. So at this point, you, it, at a, with a much larger gas leak, you do just want to start spacing um, different parts of the floor. And again, I would use the... T-Ray to try to find the least damaging things to tear up. So we tear up that floor, and we can see it spread over here. And of course, since we're spacing, the fire locks will automatically trigger. Could bolt them open, but you don't have to. But just come over here, find more floors that aren't going to be a complete pain in the ass to fix. And you can space two or three floors, however many you want. The more you space, the more faster they, you'll fix the atmosphere. But you can see the freeze-on is completely gone. Um, I'm an idiot and left my gas analyzer, but we can see there is no atmosphere in here. It is still very cold, but cold is not too much of an issue. We're going to, to fix the floors now, put some steel on them. So now this room is no longer spaced. Open this door up. We're going to open this door and then close it right behind us. And we patch the floor up here. Check our gas analyzer. There is no atmosphere. So now we go back to our air alarm, turn it back on auto. Turn it back on filtering wide. You could keep it off auto if you want. Um, filtering wide just means that the scrubbers will work in a larger radius. So air vents do have a pressure lockout if you entirely space a room. Like these little, the 0 0.03 moles of carbon dioxide is not enough to unlock out the air vent. So at this point, if you were to have brought like an oxygen canister in, uh, that would have been enough to start, uh, that would have been enough to get the room pressurized. But it really doesn't matter at this point. You can just turn it back on auto or turn it on filter and wide. It's up to you. And if you just open a door, that most often brings just enough moles from another room in to get the air vents under or get the air vents out of the pressure lock. So in this scenario, I can just visually recognize that this area has no one in it and that it would be safe for me to open this door to get the vents out from the pressure lock. As you can see, it doesn't take very much. So now the pressure lock is over. Even after a really bad freeze-on leak, the pressure isn't great, but it will get better very quickly. Again, as long as you have set up your distro correctly, um, this really just is not much of an issue. 
fixing hot and cold temperatures is really just about preemptive measures. You don't want random people opening doors. I don't care if the head of security really needs to get through this hallway. If it is the literal temperature of the fucking sun, uh, they can wait and not end up killing dozens of people because they're impatient and don't want the hallways to be fixed. Um, Atmos techs have the unique position that they really should be locking down entire hallways because if you let bad temperatures spread throughout many hallways, it can often just end an entire round because you'll make departments unlivable. And trying to space multiple departments gets very tricky because you're going to have to manage loads of people. And people get really pissy when you have to tell them to leave a department. Anyways, I think this was thorough enough. I know this gets ranty. Atmos is a little ranty. But as we can see, even with an entire freeze on canister in a small hallway, just turning on panics, fill, spacing three floors, and bolting down doors lets you manage a leak very easily. That's really all I got for now. I'm assuming there's going to be things like space heaters and space coolers later on. Um, I've at least heard people talk about it. But as for now, just using distro and making sure your distro is set up correctly and managing your tools that are given to you as an Atmos tech is really all you need to manage your temperature on a station. Thank you for watching.